Japanese government officials say mental and physical stress proved deadly for people who fled communities surrounding the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. They've released a new study that reveals moving around and living in temporary shelters following the 2011 disaster took a toll. The officials say 35 residents who were displaced in Fukushima Prefecture have died. They say all of them had to leave homes in the evacuation zone around the nuclear plant. And they say most were in their 60s to 80s. Fatigue from poor living conditions caused 25 deaths. Exhaustion from moving caused 13. Some evacuees had to move to new housing 16 times. Officials say they plan to send psychotherapists to temporary housing to give evacuees mental support. Researchers have found that the death rate nearly tripled among evacuees from facilities for elderly people near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi power plant. The research group from the University of Tokyo and a city-run hospital tracked 328 senior evacuees from five facilities within a 30-kilometer radius of the power plant. They found that 75 of them had died within one year. This is 2.68 times higher than the average annual death rate for elderly people staying at the facilities for the five years before the accident. People need to consider the risk associated with evacuation in the wake of disasters such as a nuclear accident. The research group's leader, Professor Kenji Shibuya, points out that the death rate has nothing to do with the distance the seniors had to evacuate. He says changes in their nursing care and living environment had adversely affected the evacuees' health. People in the region have suffered a range of medical problems. Administrators at a nursery school in Fukushima City report a sharp increase in the number of children with a sometimes painful foot condition. The people who run Torikawa Nursery School examined about 60 children aged between 3 and 5. They checked them last April, more than a year after the nuclear accident. 43% had developed flat feet, triple the rate before the accident. Fallen arches reduce the foot's capacity to absorb impact. So people with flat feet tire easily. The administrators checked the children again this month. They found a third still suffer from the condition. Authorities in Fukushima restricted outdoor activities for children after the crisis began. People who run some nursery schools have kept the restrictions in place. It wouldn't be a problem if kids could experience a variety of fun indoor activities to make up for the missed exercise. But everyone has to be creative to achieve that. Workers have decontaminated the nursery school in question, and children can play within the compound. Japanese distant runners push themselves to their limits in relay races known as Ekiden. They race from one checkpoint to another, then pass on their sash to their teammates. For decades, competitive teams have run more than 100 kilometers from Tokyo to the town of Hakone, then back again. Over the past few years, a different group of runners has run along the same course. But their race is not just a test of speed. 8 a.m. in central Tokyo. Around 40 young people have gathered at the starting point for a long-distance race that's a little bit different. As they run, the participants pick up garbage along the way. That's why the race is called a scavenge ekiden. There are eight teams. They'll take two days to cover the traditional course to Hakone. At each checkpoint, the garbage is weighed. It's not just a race against the clock. Runners get points for the amount of trash they gather. The founder of this event is Shinya Ichikawa. He came up with the idea of the scavenge Ekiden seven years ago. I think cleaning up public areas is the easiest way someone can contribute to society. Most of the participants are students and young adults. Few of them have volunteered before. Mariko Sagai works in an office. She's taking part because it sounded like fun. 
My plan is to find heavy pieces of garbage and then get to the finish as fast as I can. Sagai looks for trash that's hidden away out of sight, like under bushes. She soon finds so much trash that her bag splits. There's way too much garbage. No matter how much I pick up, there's more. Sagai is running a 15 kilometer stage. Wow, what a lot. In three hours, Sagai picked up 16 kilograms of trash. She's the winner for this section of the race. Running is hungry work. A well-established local restaurant lays on bowls of soba noodles as lunch for runners who finished this leg of the race. Serving some noodles is the least I can do. We want to do something to support them. Local governments are also supporting the scab in Jekiden. At this relay station, 12 staff from the city office help sort the trash gathered by the runners. They've turned out to help, even though it's their day off. At City Hall, we always want to support volunteer efforts like this. Day two of the race. The last section of the 111 kilometer course is a tough uphill climb. At 5.30 in the afternoon, the last team reaches the goal in Hakone. Between them, they've collected 230 kilograms of garbage. That's as much as 500 people throw out in Tokyo in a single day. It was really enjoyable. I didn't think that picking up trash while running would be so much fun. At first, I wasn't much interested in volunteering, but I found that helping other people is a good feeling. Last year, a scavenge ekinden was held abroad for the first time, in London, just ahead of the Paralympic Games. Similar events are planned in other countries, including Singapore and Myanmar, later this year. Shrimp season kicked off Monday in Toyama Bay on the Sea of Japan, and the first catch has been a bumper one, bringing a welcome windfall for the port's fishermen. Six trawlers returned with 880 kilograms of pinkish shrimp of the broad velvet variety. The local fishery cooperative says the shrimp are thicker and bigger than expected. Each is about 10 centimeters long. That's two to four centimeters larger than average. The catch sold for about $42 a kilogram at auction, which is 20% higher than in recent years. The start of shrimp season is a sign of spring. The seafood tastes good, deep fried, or served in a variety of other ways. This year, the Prefecture's Federation of Fishery Cooperatives registered its shrimp as a trademark. Locals call them the jewels of Toyama Bay. The area's shrimp season peaks around June.